Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. So, Coach Cristobal gave what I feel is the state of the union of the program heading into spring practice, right? But before I start, um, just got fans watching Groove and Flow in the debate. Good debate. <laughs> I met, I, I come and I said, you know, this debate is going to split the fan base just a little bit more. But everybody was cordial. So, you know, if y'all ain't checked that out, go check that out. But anyway, Coach Cristobal got his state of the union of the program heading into the spring. Now, a lot of it was the coach speak. A lot of the coach, you know, coachy coach speak that the coaches have. A couple things that I want to address. That's what I'm going to address in the video. Hopefully this doesn't take too, too long. So, sat down with Joe Rose. I didn't watch it. I just read the transcript of it. Right, I just read the transcript of it. Spoke about how he commends TVD for sticking around through all of the adversity that we just had this, this past particular year. And it was interesting because, as I said, it was a lot of coach speak. But it was interesting, Coach Cristobal taking responsibility as a head coach should in a lot of situations, that there was not enough done when injuries seemingly piled up to make the offense look good. He mentioned that it was not a fit. Some of the same things that a lot of us said throughout the year, we're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, right? Stated how, got the Alabama at work, got the Oregon at work. This particular year did not work, right? But I guess that kind of goes back to coming in the door and saying, hey, we didn't watch any film on anybody, which... You know, came back and bit us in the butt. But hopefully, we're better for it, right? But another thing that a small minority of the fans were talking about was the fact that regardless of the amount of injuries that piled up, there was no excuse for the putrid offense that we had. And Coach Cristobal basically said as much. Obviously, of course, Coach Cristobal spoke about how we're going to have a retuned, refined offensive line that should help the entire offensive production look better. And I agree. I feel like it should. Spoke about Shannon Dawson. And again, like I said, coach speak, but it was very interesting or it's very good to see. The coach Cristobal said something or mentioned something that, that the, the mindset that I have, that we can no longer continue to talk about air raid guys from the inception of it of how it was back in the late 90s you have to look at how it has transformed up into 2023 <clears throat> and coach Cristobal said as much when he was talking about the guys in the run concepts pin pull counter all those particular different things like that now obviously many people have made mention that we didn't see well they didn't see Shannon Dawson utilizing that type of run those type of runs at Houston but I will say that I think that we'll see them this year. <laughs> I think we'll see them this year, right? So that, that was good to hear. It was also good to hear that Rashad Smith, as well as Jacoby Georgia, guys that he mentions taking steps, also said that Xavier Restrepo was a guy that's always been a hard worker. Now, in terms of Jacoby Georgia and Rashad Smith, that acknowledgement could be taken one of two ways. Hopefully, it's taken the good way, right? And the two ways are some guys may feel like, okay, well, the coach gave me acknowledgement, said that I'm doing well, so I'm where I need to be, right? I'm not going to grind harder. I'm kind of where I need to be, right? And that's kind of the passive mindset that you have. The reactive mindset or the mindset that you should have is that, well, coach, think I'm doing good. Now, just wait until you see me at the end of spring or just wait till he sees me how I attack these particular drills. I'm going to take it to another level, right? And so hopefully that's the mindset that Jacoby George as well as Rashad Smith had. Now, moving on to Xavier Restrepo. Restrepo is getting the Braxton Berrios treatment. Man, I'm sweating a little bit. He's getting the Braxton Berrios treatment. And no, I'm not talking about the Braxton Berrios treatment that Braxton Berrios got at the conclusion of 2017 where Restrep I mean, uh, Braxton Berrios was basically hands down the lead of the wide receiver room, hands down probably the 
best wide receiver in terms of just being where he needed to be. Obviously, we know the talent level that Amon Richards has, but we're just talking about Braxton Mil uh, Braxton Barrios. Not that I'm talking about the Braxton Barrios treatment of when the new toys make it to campus and the old toy, nobody wants to play with anymore. I look at that kind of like Toy Story. Remember, Woody was Andy's favorite toy. Then Buzz Lightyear came along and that became favorite. That's what that's what a lot of the fans are, right? Um, I like X, you know. But one thing that I feel like that if those guys are not gonna work as hard as X, they're not gonna see the field. Because if Coach Cristobal is one of those guys where you gotta you gotta work it, you gotta work, you gotta work, then they're gonna have to work. That that work ethic has to match that talent. So right now the talent is here, work ethic is right there. So when the talent and the work ethic touch each other, then maybe they may get some reps over X. But I think X, especially from last year, dealing with the injury and stuff like that, I think he may have a, a different type of hunger. Even though, again, Braxton Berrios was not probably as swifty, as fast as Mark, Mike Harley and Jeff Thomas, he kept those two guys off the field, and he had a magical 2017 season. So hopefully that's what we get out of Xavier Restrepo. So moving on. Defense was vanilla. Defense was vanilla. That was interesting to hear. Um, I know some people felt that, and I was probably, I was one of the ones that felt like, you know, we don't necessarily have the entire personnel that we need to maybe run the defense that Kevin Steele wants to run for the simple fact that we've had misses in recruiting um, or just didn't have an active plan, kind of rested on the laurels of, what Al Golden and company recruited in, well, coming into the 2016 season, it just kind of rolled that into a dead end in 18, well, 19, 20, 20, 20, 19, 20, and 21 were basically forgettable defenses, right? When you talked about Lance Goodry or Gidry bringing in a more aggressive scheme that should fit the personnel a little bit better or a lot better, be more aggressive. And I think that's good to hear, right? Um, <laughs> maybe reaching a little bit. I, I'm thinking, I said, is that, is that a little parting shot at, at, at Coach Steele? You're saying that the defense was vanilla, all right? But I don't know. You know, it is what it is. And then lastly, the last thing I wanted to kind of touch on was Coach Cristobal talked about why he, along with the staff, were brought here to get Miami back to where Miami was, to redo, you know, to redefine the culture, bring back the break, make that winning atmosphere. And then he said also increasing the talent level on the team because the NFL draft is a basically a measurement of how well you've done amassing talent. And he said over the last five years, Miami hasn't done well in the draft. And I kind of took issue with that because I'm like, we had more players drafted in Oregon over a five-year period. Um, they had three first-rounders. We had two. Um, Javon Holland, you know, great safety um, at the University of Oregon. Now a great safety for the Miami Dolphins. But after that, and obviously they got Kayvon Thibodeau this past particular year, it's still too early to judge on what he is, but if we're just talking about that, the Oregon players did not fare that much better in the draft than we did. I mean, just, just being honest. They had one player drafted last year. We had one player drafted last year. And someone kind of commented to commented to me because I made that post, and I said, man, if you're trying to make me believe that it's acceptable to have a 10-win team and only one person got drafted, I don't know what to tell you. Because for comparison's sake, we won 10 games in 2017 and then had six guys drafted. But all in all, oh, yeah. He also said that there are going to be some guys out in the spring. So don't know who those guys are. I probably will have an idea of some. Obviously, James Williams probably comes to the top of my head. I don't know if Henry Parrish will be in. Um, will TVD play in the spring? That's, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting thing. Is he over whatever was ailing him? It'll be interesting to see if TVD will play in the spring. 
uh, probably hold back on Dunn, Cheney, maybe Citizen. So I know some people are looking for a lot. I know some people are looking to kind of see what Sh Shannon Dawson can potentially bring in the fall um, based on what we look like in the spring. But we may be down some some key guys um, offensively and we may not be able to necessarily see it, right? So that's something to keep in mind. I don't know if anybody has the update on that, but will TVD be cleared for the spring? But even if he's not, it's good to get the early enrollees on the field, get those guys acclimated. I know we're very, very excited to see what these guys are gonna do this particular year. But that's just Coach Cristobal's State of the Union on the program heading to the spring. And hey, coach speak and hopefully got these hires uh, knocking these hires out obviously Rod Wright um, is going to the Texans said coach Joe he interviewed for an NFL job a day a die interview for an NFL job so it'd be very interesting to see as the staff is currently constructed today how the staff will look after the spring right because and I'm gonna make this last point we'll make two more points and I'm gonna get out of here I made a video about this, but I was talking about Jim Harbaugh. And I said the way recruiting is and you're adding NIL and stuff like that, you're burning coaches out. And so Coach Cristobal is the guy who wants to be, again, attack recruiting the way, you know, he feels it needs to be attacked. Everybody may not feel like attacking it that way, right? So it'll be very interesting to see how this goes. And lastly, <laughs> what I said, what I made the video about, Miami fits with the Big Big Ten more so than the SEC. I think what some fans are doing is they're trying to make the football team a representation of the school. And that ain't it. That ain't never been it. We've watched two documentaries about the football team. And on each one of those documentaries, we could see staff or president and all that stuff they don't want to be associated with that. They don't want that to be the face of the school. Even though it has become the face of the school, a move to either the SEC or the Big Ten, which I feel more Big Ten-ish, will let fans know, listen, the football team is not a representation of the school. We don't have anything in common with SEC schools other than we're in the southern part or we're south of I-40. That's it. The demographics don't look the same. The attitudes, not the same. Nothing. We got, again, we're talking about less than 10% of the student body and probably, what, 2% of the student body playing football, if that? 2% do not represent the other 98. Or if we're talking 10%, 10% does not represent the other 90. So that's that. But as always, man, like, share, subscribe, comment, and as always, it's all about the you.